Hey guys, welcome back to the SoCo Customs YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a new segment called Tech Thursdays. We're going to try to keep up with this on a, uh, a weekly basis and we'll be able to, to showcase some, some various new parts and technologies and flex some of our technical knowledge. But first, that subscription button down there in the right corner, make sure to click it so you don't miss out on any new products. So the news is that Rough Country came out with some uh, monotube shocks. They are called the V2 shocks. Generally, we talk a lot about the front end handling of, of cars and trucks as we're discussing things like, like coilovers and all those technologies. But a lot of those conversations really neglect the rear of the truck. Obviously, I'm speaking in terms of half tons and light duty trucks with independent front suspension, but when you get into the Jeeps and the uh, heavy duty trucks and everything with solid front axles, you'll be able to use these up front as well. Um, I have these still tied up because apparently making our tech jobs harder than it needs to be is uh, expressly prohibited in my contract. But I digress. So shocks have a few functions. In the system of the whole car, um, as leaf springs or coils are cycling through their, their travel, shocks are meant to keep your tire firmly pressed against the driving surface, whether that be dirt or pavement. You know when you're following that 90s era Camry down the road and uh, it hits a bump and spends the next mile twerking? Uh, it, it's time to replace those shocks. Um, they're also an integral part of the braking system. So think of it this way, you've got your car and its kinetic energy moving forward and you've got your brakes and their kinetic energy that are effectively pulling you backwards. If you have a bad shock and it's allowing your truck to nosedive, you're losing out on a lot of that anti-kinetic energy that your brakes are providing. So if your truck is nosediving, industry standards says that you could lose about 15 feet worth of braking power. That is a lot of room, especially if you're trying to avoid an accident. Thanks, pal. I wish I was that smart. So what is the big deal about monotube shocks? To start off with, I'm going to chat with you a bit about the twin tubes that your truck probably came with. It is called a twin tube because you have a tube within a tube. It's like inception, but for shocks. Shockception. I pulled this rusty beat up one out of an old Dodge that we're lifting because surprise, we are trying to sell you new shocks in this video. So you have a piston that goes down the middle of that inner part of the tube. On the back side of that piston, you have some sort of gas and on the front side, you have fluid. When this compresses, it will put pressure on the fluid up here, push it through the valves at the top and the fluid will come down to the outside of the chamber. The fluid will push the gas and the compression of the shock creates a lot less room for the tube to coexist. So this shock will want to return to its original shape and size. This is a pretty reliable system for daily driving and is inexpensive for OEMs to install. They generally say you can get about 60,000 miles on the sh uh, these shocks uh, per your owner's manual. Fun facts, it is estimated that in those 60,000 miles, your shock will experience 2 million internal movements. So uh, definitely keep up on your maintenance of these. What are the drawbacks here? Well, you, since you have gas contacting the fluid, much like I explained in the Vertex shock video, um, you're, you're basically going to have the gas and fluid combine under heavy service. The fluid basically foams up like root beer in that bottle that you forgot about for the last 150 miles. Um, you'll want to open that outside at your next traffic light. This makes the shock not do its job and your truck is going to end up twerking at the end of a long day of off-roading. Now, as you can probably guess with a monotube shock, you only have one tube. It gets rid of the tubeception business as we discussed. This first piston is going to be attached to the rod and there's going to be oil on both sides of the, the piston. And then up here, you'll have a secondary piston that has uh, air on this side of the piston. So that brings us to the first benefit. Your oil is never going to contact the gas so it won't shake up, combine, and compromise the performance of the shock. The second benefit that you can get is you get more fluid in, in this one right here. Within the twin tube, you only have a one inch diameter where you can fill with fluid and only one side of the piston has fluid on it. The monotube will use all two inches of the diameter and most of the length of this tube to fill with fluid. It will take a lot longer for this fluid to heat up and this oil generally expands uh, less rapidly with heat um, than, than any gas would. To go one step further, 
uh, is the remote reservoir shock. So it will basically use a design similar to the monotube design with an additional reservoir to just increase the fluid capacity. The third benefit is that you'll get more consistent performance throughout the entirety of the travel. The secondary piston pressing on this gas chamber is what you have in this shock that's resisting the motion. This will be a huge benefit when you're doing about 30 miles per hour on a washboard or beat up service uh, road. You're basically using these to cancel out the energy that is being created by the springs. Hey guys, that was an onslaught of information. Nerds of the world unite. Hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, any additional questions in the comment section below and go ahead and kick your feet up. That was a whole lot of information, so uh, you deserve it. Cheers guys.